All right, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for April 17, 2023, 6 p.m. Good evening, administrators, council, and our audience. Thanks for joining us this evening. Uh, Ms. Bunner, can you call the roll, please? Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Vaughn. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Seven members present. Yeah, thank you very much. And tonight's invocation will be done by Fire Chief Trustee. Father Lord, we thank you for the day and all thy many blessings and many favors. Thank you for this meeting. We pray that you'd be in it and that thy will be done. Please bless our troops, their families, our first responders, and our citizens. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, moving on to uh, the, on the agenda, we have action on the minutes for the four three twenty three. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Now, when you're ready, Ms. All right. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? I'm staying. There was not an attendance. Vice Mayor Grimm? I'm staying for the same reason. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. And Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. And that passes 502. Right. Thank you very much. And moving on to communications, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, members of the public. And we have a presentation today it's from Louis Agressa. He is from Clark County Springfield TCC. And he will be uh, presenting the Clark County uh, Active Transportation Plan. I'm actually going to move the slides for him. Is this the mic? Picks me up. Okay, yeah. Okay, uh, hi. As uh, Randy said, uh, Louis Agresta, I'm the director of the Clark County Springfield TCC. I see some familiar faces. Uh, obviously, Howie serves as our TAC chair. Uh, Mr. Cook's on our board. I think Mr. May, uh, Mr. Grimm is the alternate, so I think he's at our last meeting. And then Mr. Lindsay served a time or two uh, in the past. So um, for those of you that don't know me, um, I became director in July. I was acting in uh, February, if you knew Scott Schmid. He was the TCC long, long time director for 10, 12 years, something like that. And he took a job at ODOT District 7. So happy to be serving my community in this role and tell you about a plan that we've been working on for way too long, about a year and a half at this point. Um, but I'm really excited about the work we've done and uh, hope to uh, maybe do some of these improvements here in New Carlisle. So uh, next slide, please. So the Clark County Access Transportation Plan is the first countywide bike and pedestrian plan to encompass all of Clark County. And its goal was uh, it's a plan for a transportation system that is safe for users, to all users, motors, pedestrians, bicycles, regardless of their economic status, race, or abilities. Um, you know, we are a, for the most part, a car dominant society, and that's okay. Um, but I think, you know, it's easy to forget that not everyone in our community drives, um, mostly because they don't have a car, maybe, uh, because of whatever reason. Um, so just trying to maybe create some balance for those folks that walk and bike to get where they need to go. So why is this plan important? Bicycle and pedestrian fatalities make up 14% of all roadway fatalities in Ohio. Um, they are not 14% of all the trips, so that obviously is a disproportionate amount of the, uh, the fatalities um, uh, in proportion to the, the amount of trips of, uh, out of the total amount of trips taken. Arterial roadways make up 8% of roadway mileage in Ohio, but 55% of pedestrian crashes and 46% of bicycle crashes occur on them. So what that's telling me is that uh, people that walk and bike want to get to the same places that motorists want to walk and bike to. The commercial corridors, um, the, the, the restaurants, the, the, the establishments on those roadways are often places that people that, uh, have to walk or bike want to go as well. And those are busier roadways, so you know maybe they're trying to run across the roadway because it's wide and it's got a lot of traffic, and you know they get hit unfortunately. 61% of pedestrian crashes occur at non-intersection locations between 2019 and 2009, 2018. There's probably a little bit of um, you know maybe pedestrians should go to a crosswalk, but also, without a doubt, um, our infrastructure isn't always you know it's kind of unreasonable to expect someone to walk a half a mile just to cross the street. Um, you know, the shortest distance between two places is a straight line, right? Um, so, you know, I've seen pedestrians when there's a crosswalk 10 feet away, jaywalk, and I've, you know, um, but sometimes, like I said, there's, 
the, the, uh, the amount of distance between the crossing stations is too far, and that's probably why they're getting hit. Since 1960, the way to, this is getting to the health aspect of it, you know, we're, uh, uh, we've all heard that we're Americans in general are overweight or obese, and you know, if, we're, if we create an active transportation system, the hope is that when you are walking or biking to do what you need to do, you know, maybe you're living a more healthy lifestyle as well. Next slide, please. Um, another reason why these are important, so as I mentioned kind of already, uh, equity, one zero car households, there are plenty of them in Clark County. New Carlisle is no different than Springfield. Um, you know, there's plenty of folks here that probably are living their day-to-day -day lives. They're, they're only a, uh, you know, a, a $1,500 car repair from being carless because they can't afford to get that car fixed. Um, aging in place is becoming more and more popular. We're an aging society. We're all getting older every single day. And uh, maybe some folks lose their driver's license, but they can still walk. And uh, if you can stay in your home and walk to places to get your groceries or do your business, banking, whatever it may be, um, you're more inclined to be able to stay in your home for longer periods of time. Uh, economic vibrancy. So I would like to, you know, I just got back from vacation. I was in Sedona, Arizona, beautiful place. It was walkable. You know, I'm trying to think of the places I love to be, whether it be a downtown, um, you know, any place I really like to be with my family. Uh, typically, fast moving cars are not a part of that equation. So if we can slow cars down and make a place walkable, bikeable, you know, downtown Dayton, downtown New Carolina, you guys got a cute uh, downtown here, plenty of vibrant restaurants, um, establishments. Um, it's places where people want to spend money. And then future demand, typically younger people um, expect to, you know, I, I, people, when I was turned 16, I got my driver's license. I guess that's not the case anymore. People that turn 16, they're waiting until they're 18, 19, 20, 21 years old. And they just, that, uh, that allure of getting your driver's license and driving the car doesn't have what it used to. So younger people generally are um, wanting to be able to walk and bike more places rather than, than drive everywhere. Next slide, please. So I have this slide up here. So the Compass Trail, obviously, um, it's a, a tremendous asset for the city of New Carlisle from Lake Avenue to the north, and I know it goes a little further north to some of the neighborhoods. Um, and then 230, uh, along to the uh, New Carlisle Health and Fitness um, to the south. Uh, so it basically spans your entire north-south corridor. Um, the, the blessing and the curse of a trail is I think that people <laughs> assume that trails are where bicyclists and pedestrians belong, and they do belong there, but they also belong in other places. So like the, it, I like to think of like the trail as like the, the highway, right? Um, none of us just like, we have to drive to I-70, right? There's roads that lead us to get there. It would be nice if like you could stay in your home in New Carlisle, or get on your bike in four blocks away from the Compton Trail and feel safe in riding your bike to the trail or walking, uh, whether it be you're know, crossing Lake Avenue, crossing Church Street, crossing whatever street it may be, you feel safe in doing so. You don't feel like you have to put your car on the back, or put your bike on the back of your car and drive to a, a staging area to feel safe to ride your bicycle. Do we have a technical difficulty? Oh, we're good. So um, this is a, a, a bike lane in Springfield. It just kind of shows you, um, you know, we're, we're getting there in some places in, in, in Clark County. You know, this is, a, like I said, a bike lane where, um, you know, you have a sidewalk, the turn lane, the bike lane, and then the travel lane. I mean, I'd love to see them structure like this. You know, this is pretty basic, but all over Clark County, New Carlisle, Bill and you know, all of our communities. Next slide, please. And then this is the opposite of what's good infrastructure. So this is outside my daughter's preschool. I was just, you know, like when, when you do this for a living and, and think about it a lot, you see stuff like this. So I don't know how, how many people would like to walk on that sidewalk. There's so many things wrong with it. The slush, obviously, there's a pole in the middle of the road. Imagine if you're in a wheelchair. I mean, it's pretty much, you can't really traverse it at all. Much less there's a, there's a truck blocking the, the parking lot. And if that big truck heading southbound on Limestone was in the outside lane, that mirror is not very far from your forehead because um, the sidewalks are so narrow and on the street. So we have infrastructure like this all over Clark County. It's no one's fault, really. It's just the way it was built back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, whenever it was built. And I'm just trying to raise awareness of like, we, we really need to plan and try and make these spaces safer um, for those that walk and bike where they need to get to. Next slide. Okay. So the planning process, like I said, we started this in fall of 2021. It's taken way too long. A little bit of my transition to becoming director slowed that down. Um, but we're finally about to wrap it up within the next month or so. Early on, we did an extensive public involvement component. We had 473 total responses. We had an online survey and an interactive map. Through so the interactive map, you could um, you know, kind of click areas of town, uh, City of Springfield, New Carlisle, wherever you lived, and, and say, like, the sidewalk's too narrow here, or, and, uh, the pedestrian interval at this intersection is way too slow, and I, by the time I'm halfway through the street, it's already green for the cars, and I don't feel safe. Whatever it may be, we had 473 responses. 
Um, 88% of those lived in Clark County. I think the other 12% lived or worked in Clark County but lived elsewhere. 66% lived at both, both lived and worked in Clark County. Um, and of those that gave feedback, most people had cars but walked or bike for recreation or exercise. You know, it's, it's really challenging to get the, the folks who want to hear from most, those that walk and bike for a living, uh, it's, it's kind of challenging sometimes to, to get uh, their opinions. Um, but I know they're out there and uh, you know, it's, it's important to know that the folks that we got the responses from basically are, like I said, are riding their bike for exercise or walking uh, or jogging for exercise. Okay, so the, we had four main goals, improve conditions for current pedestrians and bicyclists. Um, you know, like, like I said, I, I just have a heart for those that are, that are doing it for because they have to, they don't have a car. And, you know, go down Bechtel Avenue in Springfield, um, go during a polar vortex, so those, we haven't had one of those for a while, you will see people walking and they are not doing it to get their steps in, they are doing it because they, they have to get to work. Um, number two there, balance level of service for pedestrians and cyclists. So what that means is, so level of service is a term where we kind of grade roadways. Level of service A means that cars are getting through an, inter cars are getting through an intersection just fine. Um, but in many cases, like I think it's the, the, conception, the, the misconception is that you have to like seriously degrade vehicular infrastructure to make it better for bicyclists and pedestrians. And I, I just don't believe that's the case. I think that we can have safe walking and bicycling infrastructure and have a system where cars can just get through just fine. Um, so put that a little bit of balance. Like right now, if it's, you know, 100% good for bicyclists and 0% good for pedestrians, I think you can make it like 80% good for pedestrians and maybe like 95 good for cars. Like there's so much we can do, I think, still to kind of bring that back in balance. Um, so better connect bicyclists and pedestrians to community destinations. Like I said earlier, they, they want to get to the same places as motors do. Uh, and then the fourth one there, use active transportation as a tool for community development. Those were our main goals. And the way that we went about it, um, so these are the main places we studied. As you can see, New Carlisle and then uh, Park Lane, Crystal Lakes were some of the communities that we, you know. Springfield took a lot of the focus, but it wasn't, it wasn't a Springfield bicycle and pedestrian plan, it was a Clark County plan. So um, Enon, New Carlisle, Crystal Lakes, Park Lane were a big part of what we studied. And because we can't study every single roadway in Clark County, um, there are many, you know, we kind of, we, the, the plan does have recommendations, but the whole uh, premise is that you can, there's kind of like an a la carte menu of treatments you can make. So I'm gonna quickly go through some of these. Um, and then, you know, at the bottom, there, there's a, a cost indicator. So like filling in sidewalk gaps, it's easy. If there's a sidewalk gap along a, a roadway, um, sidewalk ends, you know, because of development reasons, it, it just wasn't built when it was developed. Um, but there's like a 300 foot stretch of sidewalk that's missing. It it's, doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that you know, filling a sidewalk gap here would do a lot for pedestrian um, benefit there. Uh, bump out, so what a bump out does is let's say, uh, you know, it, uh, maybe you have a parking lane. The bump out will go up to the edge of the parking lane in it, uh, on both sides and it would, re let's say you had 100 feet of right of way. If you have two bump outs, maybe you now, now a pedestrian only has to cross 80 feet of right of way rather than crossing the whole 100. So you decrease the crossing distance by uh, Twenty percent there. Uh, that was just a hypothetical example. Um, those, the, the downside of those is it can make snow removal a little difficult. Um, you know, those are. I don't think we should put bump outs everywhere. Just put them in, but sometimes they do make sense. Uh, and when you put in a bump out, it kind of visually squeezes the roadway. So you can imagine a, a, just a wide open sheet of asphalt. If you have bump outs, the motorists may feel restricted a little bit and just um, go slower because of that. You know, if they're going 45 and 35, maybe they're more inclined to go 35 because of those bump outs. Our RFBs, those are becoming more and more popular. Um, I think that you guys have those at 235 where the trail crosses. Uh, when they detect somebody, they, they start flashing. It is not a red light for vehicles and uh, allowing a pedestrian to go. It's really just to kind of enhance visibility for the person crossing um, to kind of get everyone's senses up and, and hey, there might be a pedestrian crossing here. I'm gonna pay more attention. Next slide, please. So mid-block crossings, um, these were, a lot of these are recommended, particularly in Springfield, and I, you know, I, it may, I, like Lake Avenue, I think makes a lot of sense, as we mentioned earlier. Um, a lot of those crashes happen at, not at intersections. I don't think it's reasonable to expect someone to walk you know, half a mile to, to cross in a crosswalk. Um, mid-block crossings you know, provide that crosswalk where you may have gaps in, in crosswalks. Um, you know, again, they don't make sense everywhere, but I think that when applied appropriately, that they can be a big benefit for pedestrians. 
Race walk, crosswalks, you know, I don't know if we're gonna get any of those in New Carlisle or even in Clark County really, but they're another tool. I always use right state as an example, bad race crosswalks, um, almost like a speed bump where the crosswalk was. Um, it's another tool, but you know, I would use that sparingly because it's pretty destructive for motorists and uh, you know, it, I think it's mostly if you have a high concentration of, um, if you really want to slow cars down and you have a high concentration of pedestrian crossings, they may make sense. May make sense. Improved streetscapes, um, very expensive and, and not a whole lot of, uh, that's more of a placemaking thing in the downtown, um, you know, rather than just have normal sidewalks. That's more like, I, I guess, the economic vibrancy of this. Um, it doesn't really do a whole lot for pedestrian safety, but if you want to make your, you know, in the downtown in particular, it makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, kind of just create some, uh, some ambiance and uh, if you can get grant funding behind it, it can do a whole lot to make your, your downtown uh, a more attractive place to be. I think we can get into bike stuff next, yeah. So signage, I'm gonna go through these quickly. Signage, uh, the, the lowest impact, lowest cost. If you just put up share the road signs, you know, it's creating awareness, um, but it doesn't really do a whole lot for utility. Shared lanes, um, I have that bike lane, or those are the sharrows. Again, not a whole lot of utility, but it does raise awareness. And then bike lanes, I had the picture earlier, um, providing a, a, a dedicated place for a bicycle to ride, um, had better than, than nothing at all. Next slide, and then I think we're, yeah, so uh, cycle tracks, there's one of those in Xenia, I can't see one here in New Carlisle, but it's uh, expensive, but it provides a dedicated, almost like a baller did, if that's the proper term, uh, space for them to, almost like a trail within the roadway right away. You know, Xenia, like I said, I think that's a cycle track where the Little Miami goes through downtown. A multi-use path, um, again, we have one in New Carlisle. Um, side path uh, would be like essentially like a multi, a glorified sidewalk, essentially. Uh, have some in Springfield. Um, they're better than nothing, uh, but, um, you know, Sidewalk is fine sometimes, but the side path, you know, obviously there's enough room for uh, a bicyclist and maybe someone in a, a motor assist or uh, like a electric scooter or something like that, or electric wheelchair um, to get to get by on the same path. And then multi-use trail, that's the council trail. So we have one of those. And I think there's talk, uh, I don't know, um, hopefully one day we can get like George Rogers uh, into Springfield and, um, you know, those are long ways, the old, the former rail corridor that's been encroached upon, it's probably never going to happen, but, but who knows, maybe we'll be able to uh, expand this company trail from, from what it is now. The one that makes a lot of sense is to connect, um, to continue the Tecumseh Trail down into uh, Park Lane uh, along 235, so hopefully we can get that one in my career at some point over the next 15, 20 years. Um, and then one-way, two-way conversion, uh, I don't think, do we have any one-way streets in New Carlisle? Okay, so we'll skip that one. Road diet, um, I don't know if we have one here really that would make sense either, but uh, the general idea is a four lane roadway, um, you know, converting that four lane roadway into a three lane roadway, bike lane, travel lane, turn lane, travel lane, bike lane. I'm not sure if there's a roadway here that makes sense for that either. But access management does, um, you know, sometimes access management, you have a driveway, 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 driveway. Uh, for the motorist and the pedestrian or the bicyclist, when you're looking at four different driveways of cars zipping in, zipping out, it's just more inclined to have accidents and uh, uh, have a pedestrian misjudge um, their ability to cross a road because you know, cars are darting in and out of driveways. Is that all of them? I think it is. Oh. Um, ADA curb ramp, I'll hit on that real quick. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, pedestrians, it's also important to, to consider our, our um, ADA compliance, those that are bound to wheelchairs or um, you know, use electric wheelchairs to get around, uh, you know, ADA curb, or even a um, family pushing a stroller. You know, we had, we have some little ones and we push plenty of strollers. Uh, ADA curb ramps that make it a whole lot more helpful than when you gotta, you know, lift the stroller up and get onto the sidewalk. So um, I know, you know, you guys did a lot of work, uh, Howie on 235 recently. He used our money to do that study. So I know you guys are putting effort into making sure your curb ramps are ADA compliant, especially on some of your major thoroughfares. I think that's all of them. Um, so yeah, uh, to me, I mean, most of New Carlisle is pedestrian and walk friendly. You know, you guys have your residential neighborhoods, like nothing needs done there for the most part. I think Lake Avenue probably, like I said, is has the most potential um, from a mid-block crosswalk perspective. Think about where the signalized intersections are and how far they are between each other. You're getting in some pretty decent distances and just um, you know, think about if you want to cross the street you know, I've, I know I've crossed Lake Avenue for the uh, Heritage of Flight Festival. Um, you know, I'm a 36-year-old able-bodied male. It's not too hard for me. 
Um, but you know, when traffic's dipping through there, I can picture if someone needed to cross the street, it might be a little difficult. Um, it's hard to see from back here. I'm trying to think. Uh, you know, Main Street, you know, I'm some mid-block crosswalks in Main Street. Um, slow cars down even more. I think you guys have 25 mile an hour through the, the main corridor, the heart of your downtown. It's, do people generally acknowledge that speed limit or do you have speeding as an issue? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah speeding's a problem everywhere. So um, I guess the whole reason I came out here today is, uh, you know, as you, I, hopefully maybe tomorrow when you're driving around, just look for pedestrians and see how they're, you know, like, just acknowledge like is this easy for them or is it hard for them um and then like when you know howie when roadway projects come up and randy is there anything we can do to make uh you know the pedestrian's life more less difficult um and then you know oftentimes you can just implant it right into a opwc grant or or you know our federal funding so um it's just raising awareness uh and uh you know getting it kind of on the table to, to at least think about so next slide please yeah, uh, this is, um, I know, our neighbors to the south, you have no jurisdiction over them. But, um, you know, I, we did a study, I, I started in 2009. There was a study on the books for the Tecumseh Trail. Um, and there's a plan from 2008, 2009, it's a time frame, to get a trail built all the way down, uh, you know, from New Carlisle down south. I'm sure there are folks in New Carlisle that want to get to Park Lane. I'm sure there's folks in Park Lane that want to get to New Carlisle. Um, I wouldn't. You know, I ride my bike. I would not like to ride my bike on 235. Um, so, like I said, hopefully, you know, federal funding would, would pay for it. It's just, it's a, we need to have a project sponsor and we need to, uh, you know, have someone to see a project through. But I would love to get a trail, you know, from the, the fitness center down into uh, the elementary there where the, the current trail stops. So, what is that, like three miles, uh, five miles? Is it? Is that. Three? Not yeah. Not be awesome to bridge that final gap there and uh, to, to connect the two communities. And then, you know, Steyr, again, you have no jurisdiction over them, but Steyr's kind of a similar roadway to Lake Avenue, kind of like a, a less busy road, but um, somewhat busy, and, and you know, a lot of people cross it, maybe it's a good spot for mid block crossings. I have to talk to my good friend Nancy Brown about that, right? <laughs> I think I'm about done. I know you got a lot going on today. So this plan will be finalized in the next month or so. Um, you know, just look for ways to make our community more bicycle and pedestrian friendly. This really is not about turning New Carlisle or Springfield or Clark County into, um, where is it, uh, Amsterdam, where like 50% of the people ride bikes and like they literally have parking garages full of bicycles. No one's trying to do that. It's just, um, you know, even just think about it like living in New Carlisle. If you live in town and you want to just ride your bike to go to Lee's on a beautiful Friday afternoon in the middle of May, like how nice would it be if you felt comfortable doing that? Um, so. Just trying to put this stuff up there, make make New Carlisle more livable. That's kind of the buzzword in in the industry, a place where people, um, you know, going on a walk, um, get your steps in uh, while doing the things you need to do anyways. I, I mentioned the last one there: walk through town, drive through town. Just be observant of folks crossing. Um, you know, the, the the mothers pushing the strollers, the the folks in wheelchairs, um, the people carrying grocery bags back to their apartment. And, and you know, see how difficult it is for them, and just you know, try and think if there are ways that we can make life easier for them. So, without taking any questions, I hope I didn't take too much time. Um, but I really appreciate you guys offering me an audience to talk about what we're doing over TCC. I had uh, one at least. Uh, so, when you went through your slides, so this program would pay for, say, like you said, uh, handicap uh, accessible sidewalks so, yeah. and things of that nature. So I, I should. Uh, so we, um, the TCC, we, we get funds for um, transportation planning. So we do the plans, and we are happy to chase dollars uh, to do whatever you want to do. If, um, if if you have an idea of what you want to do, Howie and I have a great relationship. Howie knows our funding fairly well, um, whether it be state dollars, federal dollars, and to see if uh, there's something that we can try and leverage to get you what you want. Um, did you, you used our, so like I mentioned earlier, you guys used our planning funds to do a study of uh, curb and uh, uh, ADA ramp. It just You did an inventory of what your facilities were, and then that lets you guys know what you need to spend money on. Um, we have all the planning money in the world. We have capital money as well, um, but uh, to actually build things, um, but that money is a lot more competitive and a lot more restrictive. You know, um, 
Um, Stones Trail used our, our capital money. Um, the signal rebuild, right? You guys rebuilt the signal. The whole parking, I have to bring up a similar subject, but the parking lot or the parking space, that was our funds. Uh, 235 widening the signal project down here for the bike crossing. But then, like, we helped um, secure funds for the roundabout at 235 and 41. So, even though that wasn't our funding, you know, we were involved in that. Um, you know, and then the OPWC money that you guys have used for your water plant, that goes to our office as well. Okay. So. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, uh, you know, I, the, the key to this money or to, to plans like this is next time Lake Avenue needs to be repaved. Um, the best time to do this work is when a project's under construction or about to be constructed. You don't want to, it's more expensive to come in retroactively and do things. When you have a blank slate, when you have a, a designer designing something, just have this at the front of your mind and, um, you know, implement some of these things when, when, when in the design process of that, when it's built and constructed, uh, you know, because otherwise, you know, Lake Avenue or any road gets paved like once every 15, 20 years, right? Uh, then you have to start all over and wait for the next 10, 15 years, so. Mm -hmm. All right, anyone else? Thank you very much for your yeah. time and Thank you. uh, thanks for joining thanks us this evening. No problem. Take your time, sir. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the public, uh, members of council, city manager report. Under uh, police report, we'll start off with Deputy O'Brien and the police report. All right. Okay. So in the uh, in the month of March, New Carlisle deputies were dispatched to 157 calls for service. Uh, of those, 157, 39 of those resulted in reports taken. Uh, there were 23 assists, whether that's to other New Carlisle deputies or outside New Carlisle deputies. Uh, four criminal arrests, one of those was a felony, two were misdemeanor arrests, one warrant arrest, and we did 29 traffic stops. All right, council, any questions for the deputy? Mm -hmm. right. Thank you very much, sir, we appreciate it. Thank you, I'm moving on to the city manager report. For a fire EMS report, we're going to buy our fire chief, chief uh, trustee. Council of Citizens, uh, for the month of March, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 117 EMS, EMS calls in the city, 10 in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to eight fire related calls in the city and four in Elizabeth Township. We had four EMS calls answered by mutual aid by, by Pike Township or Bethel Clark due to Medic 5 2 being on a response. We answered four mutual aid calls for Pike Township and four mutual aid calls for Bethel Park. That's uh, the main report. I do have one other thing I'd like to read to the council and the citizens. Mm -hmm. On October 29, 2022, mm -hmm. our crew was, was requested mutual aid to Tip City for a 72-year-old woman that was thrown from a horse. Upon arrival, our crew found the patient was, in, was critically injured. Our crew, along with crews from Tip City Fire Department, performed advanced life-saving care to the patient and stabilized the patient and helped package the patient for transfer, and the patient was care flighted by, uh, transported by care flight. The patient had several life-threatening injuries. Due to the care given to the patient by all crews and by Miami Valley Trauma Center, the patient has recovered from her injuries and is now at home. The patient had several several fractures, including neck fractures, ribs, pelvic, uh, collar, 
uh, hip and femur fractures. Um, the, the care flight director reviewed the incident and felt the crews involved were worthy to be put up for the Ohio EMS Star Life Award. This award is one of the highest awards that can be given to an EMS personnel. So on May 24th, our crew was, which was firefighter paramedic Emma Salisbury, firefighter EMT Rachel Salisbury, firefighter EMT Eli Foster Webb, will receive the Ohio EMS Star Life Award in a ceremony to be held in Columbus. All right. Wow. Awesome. Davey experienced a fire in one of the bathrooms in one of the patient's rooms. The uh, fire occurred due to a faulty um, light fixture in the bathroom. The sprinkler system activated as it should have. Basically put most of the fire out. We responded, took care of the rest of it. There's no injuries, so. It's a high life hazard area. As soon as we have an active fire in there, I call the world. Thank you. What happened at the license bureau <laughs> for the 14th time? Uh, the li license bureau, we had a uh, active gas leak in the building, uh, and at the, uh, at the time we got there, we evacuated the building and called in the gas company, uh, which was Becker and is now in Center Point. Center Point. Um, upon their arrival, he deemed, the, their crew deemed that the building had a high level of gas in one end that was an explosive range. So we contacted EES to come out. We had the entire power shut down to that building. And the only thing I, at that point, only thing you could do is sit there and let the paper out and, and go down. <laughs> Great. Follow up on that. This makes number four or five that they've had recently in the last couple they've had, of months. They've had two gas leaks in the past uh, six months. And Just two? In the past six months. In the past couple of years, we've had, we've had recurring problems with the building. You've got to understand that building is one building, but it houses the License Bureau, three car repair parts, whatever you want to call it. Uh, businesses plus all there's also two there's three apartments up, uh, upstairs from that uh, building is there go ahead sir. and each one of those has a separate gas either gas appliances or gas usage um, and the one time we found a leak in one of the car uh, parts or uh, repair shops from one of their hanging heaters uh, the last time was the DMV's um, furnace was uh, short cycling, so it's just. So it isn't a pipe leaking; it's malfunction of equipment. Every okay. time that we've had a problem, we've had the uh, gas company. They come out and do a pressure test on the pipes. Everything. Okay. Uh, one more question, if I may, sir. Uh, congratulations on your crew who will receive this award. I think it's an outstanding honor, not only for them. It shows to your leadership, your training ability, and your staff. And I've, I've known for a while, quite a while, that this fire department is, is one of the top notch in the area. And, and I uh, want to thank you for being the chief. And if you would, thank your crew from Councilor from me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Team effort. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. You want to? Yeah, I just want to echo the same thing, Chief. You've done a phenomenal job since you've been on board, and, and all of your crew have done a great job. So, a big thank you to them and to you for all the leadership you've given. So, thank you. And back to you, Mr. Birch. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Fire Chief, and always a great job from the administration as well. You are a key component to this administration team, and we value your leadership. Um, Moving on to the uh, city manager report for our finance report presented by Colleen Harris, our finance director. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, council, and members of the public. Uh, the finance report is for the month of March, and revenue that we took in was 
$307,302.60. And most of that um, increase was our tax settlement that we get twice a year. And expenditures for the month of March was $1,099,578.08. Our ending statement of cash, our ending balance is $6,972,000. $301.01. Our bank reconciliations are all done and up to date. I'll do this monthly. The next report is your income tax report from our income tax, uh, Vicki. And she, for the month of March, collected $119,665.23 in their income tax. Compared to last year, we're up 5%. And compared to last year for the total for the year we're up about four percent a little note on our income tax last day to file for city income tax is tomorrow and most uh, hopefully everybody has already had that taken care of Vicki has done about 81 returns so far helping citizens that have called her and made appointments plus some walk-ins and she's filled about 65 phone calls if anybody has a question last minute question they can call CCA uh, there's a toll free number, 1-800-223-6317. They can call our office at 845-9492. Uh, there probably is not any more time on Vicki's plate to do the returns, but she would be more than happy for any of us to help walk you through. And that is for income tax. We also have the forms 24-7 in the lobby, and they look like this, and, they're in, and they can just grab them walk right through and most of it's pretty simple or you can call a tax preparer. So that is our update on our income tax. Mayor's Court, they uh, receded four fines and court costs for the month of March, $5,585. That's a year to date total of $13,324. And for the uh, profit and loss that I believe um, everyone was interested in or one of the council members we had um, year-to-date revenue is thirteen thousand three hundred twenty four dollars expenses are only five thousand nine hundred one dollars and we are in the black at three thousand five hundred forty six dollars and twenty seven cents so we finally paid back all our startup costs and now it's producing some revenue um, I threw in also the interest for Star Ohio. It is up to 4.87% last month. We uh, received $12,973 in interest on our earnings in Star Ohio. That is my <coughs> overview, and I'll entertain any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Motion by Ms. Agee, second by Mr. Vice Mayor for the finance report. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rogel? <coughs> yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. That's a section 7 zero. Motion approved with Mayor's Court. Second. Second by Ms. Eggleston. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rogel? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. That's also at 7 0. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, <coughs> Ms. Harris, and moving on to the city manager report, our service report presented by Howard Kitko, our director of public service, slash assistant city manager. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, members of the council, members of the public. I will start on the public works department. Uh, the big ones, Dura patching coming up with all the potholes that have uh, formed through the winter. Summer blend of emulsion was to be available uh, today or tomorrow, which we get that from Troy, Ohio, uh, which time the street crews will get out, tune the machine out, and start performing those uh, pothole repairs. Street light proposal that I did sign 116 for out here by the shelter house. AES did approve that installation. Uh, the materials are on order, and I updated Mr. Cook on the way in about that. <laughs> And then um, the uh, street sweeper proposals, as we had discussed in 320, uh, there'll be further discussion to come. I do have a so, uh, gentleman who emailed me yesterday to try and start getting some demos. One is in early to mid-May. We're trying to get the other one to be in about the same time. 
on a couple different machines, so that is still ongoing uh, for that project. Underwater department, our private well inspections have started. We just, uh, myself and uh, two of the guys, we went around and did two of them, one on Smith Street, and then we did PFI, and it's kind of good to get out there and see uh, what their old drinking well was that they had before they came on city services, and then they have a geothermal well, which we do inspect those as well because those get pumped into the building, make sure that they are not cross-connected. But we documented all that information, talked with the general manager, and then we'll work with them on their old private well to possibly get that abandoned. You know, then they don't have to worry about it and we won't have to worry about inspecting it further. Uh, so those will be ongoing. We have about between 40 and 50 uh, wells in the city and we'll be making those appropriate inspections and hopefully we'll have an updated list soon. Well one is currently being cleaned uh, by the contractor. I believe we were waiting for the pump to get set uh, this week or next. Um, moving on to pool operations. The water crews have started the week of 4-3 dewinterizing and preparing the pool for the 2023 season. Some of the big items we'll be doing this year is working on the boiler. We will also be replacing all the sand and the filters as well, getting all of those done. I did meet with a gentleman last week, late last week um, about just different operations and stuff and got some insight on a, on a few things that we're gonna work on. Uh, sewer department, uh, first uh, disbursement for OPWC funds was today. Uh, we'll be paying the contractor our share. The equipment is on order, slated to receive it late fall, early winter, and then with an early 2024 for install for those two clarifiers. Plan expansion study ordinance was approved by council. I missed that on editing it. Uh, I've already signed that agreement and sent that off to Burgess and Nipal, so we will be starting our study. He did uh, get back with me and he was on uh, like last couple of weeks uh, spring break with his kids as well uh, 2022 road reconstruction um, since the last uh, um, report uh, we ended up putting um, falcon on the bid uh, process um, but i wanted to update you as we know we're trying to update our ada ramps everywhere we go um, i do have the documents to where uh, with falcon getting done i think our engineers estimate is 68,000. so there has been a pretty increased jump on cost of asphalt this year but we do have to take into account 688 ramps that we will have to do now with falcon's rebuild so we don't get to go putting down you know a lot of asphalt so um but we also got to do those six i plan on doing four or so more in the willowick area with 88 ramps and we are currently finishing our design phase of the curbs and ADA ramps downtown 235. Some of the ramps you'll notice will not get replaced. However, the detectable warning strips, which is the orange looking, orangish reddish uh, bump pieces, those are called truncated domes. Some of those do not meet current guidelines, even though they're flush level, no tripping hazards, they have to go to a new mat. So some of that work we're actually gonna do in house because we'll chisel it out and put those mats in. Uh, you will see some new ones, and then the ones that look like they stay are because there are right-of-way issues, and when you have right-of-way issues by the federal guidelines, you can just submit a waiver uh, because you we're not looking to go purchase more right-of-way and take away property when the ramp may only be out 1%. Um, so some of those will stay, and we'll get waivers through ODOT. Uh, that engineering estimate should be probably within the next couple weeks, and it'll be out for bid. Uh, Fenwick Drive reconstruction that should be out from the county out for bidding here probably within the next couple weeks. I don't, do not have Dirk's email right in front of me for the specific date, but that is coming. Um, we are still working on the uh, Clark County, the design for the Scott uh, Carlisle Park for the new basketball, ADA, sidewalk, benches. Those are in the new ADA swing that is still in design. They just got the survey completed. And then we'll be working, uh, digging into the Nature Works grant to get the gazebos down at the pool. And that is all I have in the report. I can answer any questions from it or any additional stuff I may have missed or you guys have seen. When you can be doing potholes? Any day. <laughs> any day. They might be picking up the emulsion tomorrow. Wasn't going to be today, so uh, it might start tomorrow. There's a couple on North Henry. We have a list. What one? Uh, okay, you know. Okay, there's one right there at the curb, and there's one just past Washington. I think it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'll be going every street. I finally figured out where they're at, so I drive over them now instead of hit them. Uh. <laughs> <clears throat> Did Mr. Linda? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you.
Uh, I just have a couple for you, Mr. Kitko. Um, one, any just time timing updates on uh, Main Street and paving this year? Uh, it'll be done before the Heritage of Flight Festival. Okay. And then, um, with it, that, it, it went for sale uh, a week ago, and the bids came in. So the bidding's out, so now it's just ODOT getting the contract signed with the. But it'll be curb, curb ramps first, and then they just have to have paving done before the festival. Okay. Do you, do you have, um, since you touched on it, the curb, do you know which ones specifically will be getting redone? Pretty much, it's uh, just to give you a generalization, it's everything in front of, I believe that's the, is that the Methodist Church across from CVS? Yeah. So pretty much all of the Methodist Church frontage. Uh, there's a section or two in front of CVS. There's a section, a um, couple sections, I think, in front of Rite Aid. There's three or so sections in front of the western side of 235 between Washington and Jefferson. So in, in general, that's it. But the, the majority is almost the whole part in front of the church. Okay. Um, and then since we will be getting Main Street repaved, Light poles. I know we touched on some casual conversation with the paint coming off of the deck of the lights. Any updates on how that we're going to approach that? Um, I still got to approach that company that you brought to my attention to see if we can just go ahead and do a quick sand and Cause, keep touching them off. Because I remember, I think you guys touched some off a year or so ago. And it, looked, it looked like it held well. I don't know if it did or not. It, it holds a little bit, but it, it's just we can still see it flaking a little bit just because okay. it's uh, cast aluminum right. and it oxidizes. So it's just like rust. Okay. It's easy to seal rust. I have yet to find, unless I talk to this company, uh, to seal aluminum okay. oxidation. Okay. All right, go ahead. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. All right, thank you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Kiko. Moving on to the city manager report under informational items. Kind of got a lot to discuss, so I do apologize. Um, so under discussion topic, we have the fire EMS health levy uh, promotion. So at the last meeting, we said we we're gonna talk about this today. Um, so what I discussed with Mr. Kiko yesterday, and he did a fantastic job. We have the two digital reader boards that we got with COVID money. So we do have some uh, stuff we're going to be putting out there. So it's basically simple stuff. Fire, fire, I remember exactly. Fire the email self levy on page one. Page two is going to be like no new taxes, and then uh, the day of the uh, ballot. Measure. Yeah, vote yes in the date. We don't want to go more than three pages. They're next to someone. You know, they're going to be sitting next to a road. So. Clearly, we're going to put one at down by Water Dog, and then more than likely the one over by on um, the airport coming into town. Those are the two most highly traveled entries and exits. Fire Chief has got some ideas. I know he came today um, with his staff to talk about some things, more than likely about past the boot. I think it's really past the point of doing anything in print at this point in time. Uh, since they are renewals, I, I don't think we have much concern with them failing. I think they will pass. It's not a new levy. Um, so whatever council wants us to do moving forward, like I said, we're going to do the digital promotion with the side of the road. Fire chief, you can tell them what you're going to plan on doing. Well, and we're anything above and beyond that council can help us how they would like us to move forward. Um, with Mr. Cook, Ms. Eggleson, uh, we've got a plan together for on um, April 30th, which is a Sunday at noon. We will be doing an open house at the station. Uh, grilling out free hot dogs and chips and pop and uh, Arrow Queen is donating ice cream donut sandwiches to us to, ha to hand out. Uh, and just basically pretty much a big open house for the st at the station. Um, we're going to have everything set out, the gear, the equipment, uh, to show the citizens what we used this money the past five years for, what, they what we used their money for, and the progress that we've made. And then also, too, we're going to have listed out what we why we need to continue that money to maintain the salaries for the crews, uh, purchase of the new, new uh, engine that we're looking at that we've ordered, and other equipment that we need to order in the next five years um, to stay current. Uh, but we're going to have everything laid out that day for everybody. Everybody's welcome to come up and um, you know walk through the station, look at the equipment, talk to the crews, uh, that type of thing. We throw out the cornhole boards going. Play a game of cornhole, that type of thing. Can we get the water hoses out? <laughs> We're, we are going to shoot the city as long as, as long as it's <laughs> please most pressure possible. <laughs> as long as it's um, you would warm be. and not. <laughs> As long as we're not back in the winter again, right. uh, we are going to uh, <laughs> set up the engine out on the back on the in the park lot, drop a small hose, uh, one of the uh, attack lines down, and let people see if they want to if they want to hold a hose line, see what actually what it's like. That'd be fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what it's like holding that, that hose line and trying to move it around, that type of thing. Awesome. Noon. 
Fire Chief, if you don't mind, um, so I think it's also a good opportunity to promote the health levy side of things. Um, if I supply you with some information regarding yes, that, we'll just throw it in that way. We'll yes, throw no the no problem. Leave us there. We'll go with that as well. Um, I did, Dave Daily News did reach out for an article, so I did supply them with information regarding that health levy. Did they reach out to you regarding yes, sir, the fire did. stuff? So we'll have a, a newspaper article about the levy as well. Sounds like. I just don't know when it's going to be framed. Okay, fair. Thank you. Yep. You guys, I'm assuming you'll, well, I mean, put some, uh, some graphics up for our city's Facebook page and whatnot. I don't have any graphics for this one. I'm, I'm sure I can make something up or we're going to have someone do them. Um, it's something so simple like the yes on the fire and health levy. Um, we don't have an issue number with this one, which was odd. Uh, that was odd. There was no, that's where you want to get the uh, yard signs in time. We're waiting for an issue number to uh, appear. Okay. So we can whip something up. It's like a Facebook banner or something. It's, it's something simple. Okay. You know, we're also going to put it on our, our face, uh, department Facebook and uh, New Carlisle Facebook page, that type of thing. Okay. Mr. Long, did you have a question? Uh, how long would the uh, fire department uh, tours last? We'll start at noon and we'll hang around there until everybody you know, wants to leave. Okay. We're there 24 7 anyway. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, I've been there before and there's nobody there. That's because we're on the call. That's because your medic's gone, you know. <laughs> and also, historically speaking, citizens of New Carlisle have been especially in the past 12 years, just super supportive of our levy. So from your administration, we thank you for that because it does make everyone's job easier and it also promotes a lot of safety and health stuff for your citizens. So, um, but I think the citizens see us making progress and you know, you know they, they really support and support the town. So we're excited to see that year in and year out. True, very true. I might reach out tomorrow too and see if I can borrow another reader board. Can I get one from the county too? Oh. You know, get a couple more intersections covered. That'd be a good idea. More than area. Yep. Great. Anything council wants to do above that, just let us know. Um, what about tossing on water bills, I'm assuming? Um, it might be too late. Too late. Or when's the next one to go out? They send it out next week. Um, when does it hit? May, May 1st, so it'll be. Yeah. May 1st. We'll throw it on there just, just in case. Okay. Yeah, we'll throw it on. For, but not for privacy. Not for the open house, but yes, for the letter. Yeah, yeah for yeah. the letter. Okay. Will you note that, Ms. Harris? I'm going to yes, note it just in case I forget. Thank you for that. Great recommendation. And this is on ballot in May? May 2nd. Mm -hmm. And this is, I just gave this for informational. What's going to happen with this next topic is next week there will be an ordinance introduced for you guys to extend that franchise or not. This has to do with the waste management numbers. So right now I have the waste management new oil cost numbers. They are very aggressive to stay with New Carlisle. Uh, mine went up $7 a month, times that by a quarter. It's not an apples to apples comparison. We don't have to use uh, specific trash cans and take what they want. But I was actually shocked to see these renewal numbers, not seeing them so aggressively high. Ultimately, it's council's decision. Um, I did get a little legal opinion on that, how to move forward, but our charter specifically states to extend the franchise that does require a vote of council. So what we're going to do is introduce an ordinance to extend the franchise. Um, next week, we'll take action on that at the second meeting in May. Should council vote it, uh, pass it as a whole, we stick with waste management with these numbers. If we fail it, we go out with it. Or wherever you guys want to handle it moving forward. Um, so that's the best way to handle that. Um, if you want to read me for, if you want me to read for the record, the renewal numbers, I will. Please. Okay. So what are they proposing um, for a 96 gallon cart? That is your standard service. Right now, the current monthly charge is $19.52. For the year one renewal, it would go up to $22.75. For the year two renewal, that would go up to $23.88. Let me break that number down for you. So what that equates to is year one monthly increase. This is just for the 96 gallon, which is the biggest container you can get. And it also includes your recycling. That is a monthly increase of $3.23. Past that, it's, um, for the second year, it's an increase of $1.13. What that looks like on a quarterly basis, if you're with the 96 gallon, is an increase of $9.69 per quarter for year one, $3.39 year two, for a total $13.03 per quarter. Um, if you are on the nine, uh, 64 gallon, which is a low volume, that will go up 95 cents year, um, I'm sorry, $3.06 year one, 95 cents year two, with a total increase of the, of the monthly of $4.01. What that looks like quarterly is $9.18 uh, year one quarter, year two quarter increase would be $2.85. Total quarterly increase for the um, low volume 64 gallon would be $12.03. 
Um, your senior level, which is a 35 gallon, so anyone in the city of New Carlisle, age 55 or older, is eligible to be on the senior uh, rate. And that is a 35 gallon trash and con uh, recycling container. Current monthly charge on that is $13.23. They are proposing a slight increase of 66 cents the first uh, year. Second year monthly increase would be 69 cents with a total increase of $1.35 over two years with a totally quarter, quarterly increase of $4.05. So these renewal numbers are actually pretty aggressive to stick with waste management. Also may be up to council's decision. Um, council graciously did give them a, a slight uh, increase I think back in December. And I think that these renewal numbers reflect that. Uh, waste management is very interested in saying our supplier. Um, about this time of year, I get a lot of calls from, uh, from waste people, but ultimately it's council's decision. So this is what the council will be voting on. Again, to reiterate, at the next meeting, you'll have an introduction ordinance to extend, and you'll actually be voting on that at the second meeting in there. Um, but that's what we have. Can I ask a question, and I'll ask it to Mr. Bridge and to Mr. Cook, since you are pretty knowledgeable about this. So if we were to say, let's put it out the bid, um, it could come back as, just hypothetically, waste management, let's say four companies put in for the bid and waste management ends up being the cheapest in this scenario, but they could still end up being higher than what they originally proposed for this, right? So it's a, it's again. It is a massive. It could, it, they could end up still being cheaper, but in the long run, they could end up being higher than what they're initially proposing if we were to just sign them and continue on, correct? If I'm saying that right? Yes, so with, last time this came up for renewal, I had suggested that we stay. And the council at that point time would test the market, put it out to bid, came back higher than what it was. So, strategically, if you already have your numbers out there, you know, I don't, I, I don't know, I don't have a crystal ball how they're gonna come back, but generally speaking, they're not, they're not gonna be this. Or they'll more likely be a little expensive. But again, I'm not, I don't have that crystal ball. Yeah, yeah. And usually we get two, two, two people back on the bid, and it's usually one people or always bad. Right. Yeah. Cash, your thoughts on that, Mr. Cook? No, I no. personally think we need to go out for a bid and see what's out there. You've got three major players. Mm -hmm. You've got uh, <coughs> Allied, Rumpy, and Waste Management. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not at all happy with that proposal. Fair enough. I, just, I was just curious. Anyone else on that topic? Mr. Lundy? I agree with Mr. Cook. I'd like to see uh, it go out for bed. Um, I've heard that Rumpke will be waste management to mm -hmm. take their business. I said that last time too, though. Yeah, they always say that. They, they did. Say and that. You're, you're, you and Mr. Reynolds were the one who told me to put it out the bid last time. Yes. And it came back to me higher. Just keep that in mind. And I, I'd really like to do it again this time, too. <laughs> That's up for counsel, for the, sure. The, the, the problem I have, we're spending the citizens' money out of their pockets. So if by chance we can't get it cheaper from Rumpke, Rumpke or Allied, or I don't think it, it, it won't come back like it is with waste management, but a lot of people aren't happy with waste management. I don't know if they're calling you, because believe me, I tell them to. <laughs> we got a few calls, not too much. Not too much. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, the guy that gets my trash, he does an awesome job, you know. The, uh, but you have a lot of people on fixed incomes I know I keep harping on fixed income because we do have a lot of retirees in this town. And I, I would just prefer to, to go out to bid for the three, uh, three players and see what we can get. That's for you and your I mean, that's, decide, that's, for sure. That's my two cents for the other five members. I don't think I have to convince this one. <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm neutral either way. I can understand both sides of the fence. Um, but just keep in mind, you said fixed income. And right now you have a senior rate of 35 gallons or less. And it's such a young age of 55 to be on that. And they're going to see a very small increase. So um, the fixed, the people in the senior cart are going to benefit the most from this. Um, the one thing I am waiting on, and hopefully I have this for you before you guys make your vote decision, 
And usually when we get to using the real numbers, we get a percentage of who's on what, like we've had 35% of our people on the 96 or you know, 86% are on low volume. I don't have that with you, so I think that's a very big component for council to make that decision. Uh, you know, if you have you know 40% of your town that's aging community on the senior level plan, that's really your gambling advice by putting it out for them. My job is to supply council with information needed for you guys to make the best decision moving forward, and that's what we're going to do. And you're right, it could go either way. It really could. You just, you just don't know what it's going to come back as. And, and on trash day, sometimes I drive around, I don't see a whole lot of the little things. I do see some, but actually there's, I hate to say quite a few, because there's more 96 gallon than sure. anything else out there. Uh, and some of the seniors has the 96 gallons, you know. Uh, I've got it. I don't know why, but I did. I only put it out once a month. <laughs> I, I should probably go to that smaller container. Yeah. But, you know, in the fall when I have to clean my yard up, I like the bigger container because I just shove it in there, you know. Yep. It only takes me a month to get rid of the stuff versus all winter. Yeah. And there may be a company that's really aggressive wanting what our business and may do a low bid for the right. first year, um, but then may come back and get us later on down, but that's just business. But yeah. Like I said, it's the market and how we want to do it. But like I said, knowing what I saw an increase where I'm at, which is seven dollars a month, and seeing what this was, it, it's I think it's super, very, very, very competitive. But that's just my opinion. Mr. Rodwell. And let's, let's also keep in mind when when waste management agreed to go to every week recycle, um, they didn't raise rates on the on the seniors. On no, the they didn't. They they left those away. Mm -hmm. um, I feel that was more in a good faith. Uh, I think, um, you know, uh, the, the cost of fuel continuing to rise, cost of employment continuing to rise, health insurance continuing to rise. Uh, these are uh, these are actually really good rates. Um, and I, I, I must, I'm going to say something, but I, I, I think we, we might have a little bit of conflict of interest when it comes to bidding out new trash companies. Um, that we, you know, we need to just make sure that we're, we're doing what's right for the people and not what, what we might think is right. I'm certain you know. yeah. I, One more comment. Yeah. I, can, I can see it go either way. I mean, it's like Randy said, it's hard to tell the future. Uh, I think that the increase on the senior citizens' cams is the one that, that I focus on the most. I mean, I, I have a 96 and it's you know, I expect it to be an increase, but the increase for the senior citizens is really small, and I like that, so um, I'll keep that in mind as well, but I mean, I, I'm only 50-50 split down the line, but it, it, you're darned if you do, you're darned if you don't type situation, so, uh, Mr. Cook. May I suggest that uh, waste management give us a percentage of seniors versus the other two categories. Yeah, we're waiting on that information. I'll get that soon. And hopefully we'll have that. Adjust where we are. Normally what happens in the industry is you're subsidizing the low senior cost with the 96 gal. Sure, sure. Absolutely. Well, you guys will have a tough decision to make, but we'll have all the information for you to make that decision. And we'll, administration, we'll gladly do whatever you guys vote in for sure. Right, thank you, sir. Yep. Another topic for discussion is the Hensley Park sign kind of got blown over in one of the one of, one of the 300 wind storms we've had in the past six months. <laughs> so uh, something we got to take to have a discussion about. Um, I'm going to beat for this. I know I am. You want me to say it? Yes, please. Leave it down. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any argument? Hearing none. Hearing none and moving on. Great. Awesome. I, I did have one question, even though you already touched on it. Yeah. It, it's a different sign now. Smith Park. We did. We're going Can to. Can you touch on that? We. Yeah, we have. We, you want me to touch on it, or do you want to touch? On it? You, because I was. I don't know if you talked about the last meeting since I wasn't here. No, no. So I, we're going to hire a local guy to come just clean it up a little bit because I've got. I got long range plans for that sign. I don't want to put too much into it, um, but it does need to be improved from what it is now. It's horrible. Um, but down the road, in the next three or five years, I'm going to start looking at all our city instrument signs and starting to make them a little beefier, like a lot nicer, and then kind of follow that motif with our park signs. 
What would be, I know, um, sign wise, I know that we talked about maybe an LED on the side of the of 101. I'm working on it now. What about, is, is it, do cities have LED signs at entrance points of their towns? Like, would it be? Um, I think some do. I think they're kind of weird. Um, okay. I think some of the people like, like that would maybe do it at Hensley Park. I don't want to do it at one of our main entrances because it's flying in. Right. Um, I'll tell you, be, I mean, you guys can put your two cents on it or not, but I don't think our entrance sign should be the delivery board. That's just weird. I was just curious. Yeah. Um, but to answer you, to piggyback off that, I am securing quotes now to do that digital reader board on the side of uh, 101. Okay. I got one in now that's kind of expensive, so I'm going to re quote it out. Um, but yeah. All right. Here goes. On the Hensley Park sign, mm -hmm. I mean, the big one, the big part of it, I mean, that can go away. But I think we need to put that down and make it then back up somewhere. Oh, like the city of New York City found in 1810. Yep. <clears throat> in regard to the Hensley sign, I guess that goes back a long way with a lot of history that is involved, not only in the sign, but the gentleman that did serve this community for many, many years, and I personally would like to see that go back up. Would it be apropos to uh, possibly contact the Kempsa schools and see if some of their shop class might want to take a new sign under their bailiwick and provide that? Um, I'll look into using the schools. I mean, that's something we want. I don't know how complicated that kind of design could be. Um, I think here, what Councilman, a Councilman Eagleson said, I think there was a piece of our history he not on it too. Instead of it coming back the way it was, because there's a lot of businesses that were on there that not in existence anymore. Um, I think that we can do better with the plot of land that is at that. However, I think we still need to honor what that park was about. And then maybe we make a plaque that goes by the open air shelter. And then we name all that stuff there. That way it's still honoring uh, the Sheriff Hensley that it was named after. It's still a little prideful was found in 1810. But I think that we can work with something putting on that little plot, which we'll get to later on that, you know, when it's time for that. Um, but I think there is importance of naming what that park was. If not, we're just losing our history. You know, what does that look like? Does it need to be a eight foot by 25 foot sign? No, we can still honor that by doing that stuff. So, we still have that sign in storage, or we have to No, we still have it uh, here at the hood. Okay, so we could probably reuse some of the sign because I think on top it didn't have a picture of Stephanie Hunt, Sheriff Hensley. Yeah. Oh, 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 if it got damaged. So we'll get something together and we'll represent the council. But yeah, great, great suggestions of bringing history back into it for sure. Um, any other uh, questions in the park? Um, no? <laughs> so we'll move on. So we got some good information. So for those of you who have not heard, we applied and were awarded $430,000 of, of free money to build a second shelter house out here. So we have recently, last week, been submitted <coughs> our GAT chart, which is a timeline of when things are supposed to be done. And then also a floor plan, and we'll get some full site, full site plan elevation soon. Um, when we say full site plan, that's going to have your parking lot location and all that good stuff on there. Maybe some color elevations instead of just the black and white ones we have now. But honestly, I think they did a really good job with the floor plan. When you look at that, you come in, you come into a, an into area, the bathroom's gonna be on either side of you, but then you have another locking set of doors, set of doors right there. So um, be able to keep it off and then your storage facilities are through the side of that. The reason why the kitchen is where it's at because it's actually just cheaper that way to put all your plumbing and all your paste and pipes and all that work in the bathroom, bathroom you want to do. But it is around 2,000 square feet, so we're excited to get that going. According to the Gantt chart, I'm going off memory here, I think it's supposed to be done by the end of September. Yep. Um, Howie more than likely will be managing this project. He's done a great job with it so far. Um, so if anything changes, Jack is drafting you with his dance chart. We'll definitely keep you updated, but you're going to be seeing some moving out here pretty quickly. Um, and again, as soon as we have that full site plan, we'll definitely email it out to council. Board of Zoning Appeals meeting that was scheduled at 417, which was today, that's been post postponed until May 3rd, 2023 meeting. Um, we did do notifications of cancellation on the Facebook city website, and I also personally called everyone that was at the last meeting who did not get notified of the cancellation last. The reason why they can't keep them being pushed back, we don't have those uh, documents back from the report yet, just going to have the official site plan and stuff like that. 
I don't want to put anything really too tentative in front of council or the planning board. So again, if we have to wait a couple weeks to have suffice information, then that's what we'll do. Um, if we don't have it by next time meeting, we'll do the same process. I'll do the email out to council and then, you know, let everyone know that's been canceled again. We do have a vested an interest in getting this going there under a time frame. So we're supposed to, I date, we're supposed to have a deadline of the 28th to have that official stuff back to me. Uh, but again, if that changes, then we'll let you know. Um, so this is some fun stuff too. We have the Carlisle one alcohol ballot, ballot measure. So council passed a resolution support. I, uh, since that resolution was passed, I had a meeting with the interested parties at 571 last week. It went very well. Um, so we got a lot of things to do. Um, one of those things is we have to name a petitioner. That's going to have to be the petitioner for that ballot. That council member has to live in Carlisle one. Ms. Eggleston, are you still interested in, in doing that? If so, um, we would need a motion for council to do that. And what that's going to trigger her to do is basically work with me and that board and get all the paperwork, work with Jake. Um, I'll be bringing Ms. Eggleston in for one, a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings, planning how we're going to get the signature and stuff like that. But unfortunately, it just has to be that one petitioner. I think she'll do great, <coughs> so we would like that person. Move to appoint Councilman Elizabeth Eggleston Thank you. to, as a petitioner for the alcohol ballot initiative. And second by Mr. Cook, yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? You can vote. Councilman Cook? Yes. You can vote. She has to give a reason why she's going to abstain. She has no legit re reason. Per Robert to the border. Okay, so if you don't want to vote, then say you don't want to vote because it doesn't. Uh, no, that is not a. Uh, she doesn't have to give a reason as far that, as. That is not a reason not to vote. The only reason you cannot vote on anything is if it's personally involved as money, or you're going to be gain something from it. No, if she doesn't want to vote, she does not have to vote. She has to give a reason why she doesn't want to vote, but. So one of the things in that resolution that we did is, is council supposed to do a public informational campaign. So we'll be getting with, I'll be getting with Ms. Eggleston um, with what's the best way to do that. Another thing is this gives the sole power to Ms. Eggleston when the time comes. Ms. Eggleston will be that sole decision maker between if she wants it as, um, we're gonna be doing beer sales, wine sales, and mixed, mixed, mixed beverages, and then Sunday sales. So the million dollar question is, do you wanna do um, liquor by the glass. And what that means is a shot. Um, that would be Miss Eggleston's sole decision since she will be the petitioner. But the big difference between that is a bar would be able to sell you a shot of tequila versus a margarita place would be able to serve you a mixed drink that has a shot of tequila in it but not an actual shot. Right. So it may seem minuscule, but that's really what it is. It really separates between a full-fledged whiskey, like a bar bar, versus a restaurant type bar. Because all the stuff we're doing now requires 50% of your sales to be in this food. Well, if you do that liquor thing, which is a shot, you don't have to sell any food, you can literally sell alcohol. Mm -hmm. So that'll be an savings and sole decision. Mm -hmm. well, a lot of pressure. <laughs> she, she's good. She'll make the best decision possible. On this alcohol ballot initiative, uh, does the entire city get to vote on that, or just Carl one? Just Carl one. Okay, yes. that's what I was on. Mm -hmm. It's what I thought, but I wasn't yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, so we'll be hitting the ground running. There are some deadlines we have to hit. Um, there's two, two distinct deadlines. One's in June, and that basically what that is is we have to give something. I don't have this in front of me. We have to submit something to the state liquor control that says that we have a verified state for the board of election. So that's issue uh, deadline one. And the final deadline is the 90 days before the uh, ballot measure. And I think that Ms. Eggleston will have a vested interest in this, because as a petitioner, I'm pretty sure there's a $10 fee to file the uh, ballot measure. So someone would be paying for that, whether someone, more than likely, the money will be donated for other campaign stuff, but she'll be you know, responsible for all that stuff. And my understanding is you got to pay a fee to submit an alcohol ballot, but I could be wrong. Any other questions on alcohol one? And Carlisle one? No, sir. No, we are excited about that. Yes. Um, I really think it would do good for our downtown businesses. People go in and get something to drink. 
Uh, new Carlisle health sets there are attached, so just in case you're wondering what the health levy pays for, this is a great example of it right here. Um, so let me get to that report. We sent our year-end stats to the Date Daily News, but it pays for your plumbing inspections, your animal bite investigations, food inspections, food complaint inspections, mercury spills, nuisance investigations, uh, plan approval for food and plumbing, uh, school inspections, pool inspections, smoking ban complaints, letters, tattoo and body shop piercing inspections, nursing services, um, home visits, um, nursing clinic visits, um, birthing stuff for new kids. So it does pay a lot. Basically what do is a loss for us. We receive around 65,000 a year in that levy and we immediately just send it to Clark County by health center and it's a loss. So we get it, it goes to them and they supply all the services here and it's a loss for us. So it is a very beneficial uh, levy to have. Um, friendly reminder, we will have another presentation at the Monday, May 15th, 2023 Council meeting, and that is for the Residential Development Traffic Study presentation. We did uh, amend that study to remove the Miami County annexation and then also add a few other things, a few other intersections. So because of that, we had some new data that needed to be added, so we delayed the first one. But yeah, it's going down May 15th. Be happy to entertain any questions. Right. Any questions for Mr. Bridge? All right, thank you, Mr. Bridge. Excellent report, a lot of information. We appreciate it as always, sir. All righty, moving on. Community reports done tonight. Comments from the members of the public. Have any questions, comments, any of the above, please go to the podium. We need your name and address. And please keep it to five minutes. Keep it in time. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you. My name is John Kraybacher, 307 North Henry. Um, I know on your other business, you know, you have on there about the trash cans. Now, my problem is when the trash cans are still sitting out on the street on Wednesdays and Thursdays. There are certain streets and certain people don't even take their trash cans off of the street. That's where I have a real problem. Some of the trash cans are also still full. You know, they don't even pick them, pick up the trash. Now, um, you know, I travel, you know, I travel the area around the, the community garden quite a bit because I have a fetish with Era Queen, and I love going down the street. Era Queen. The other day, I counted 20 <laughs> trash cans still out on the street on Saturday. Some of them were in the street even on Saturday and Sunday. And there are, and some are just overflowing. Some are overflowing. Some people must not really get the memo on how to put furniture to get it picked up. Because, because they, they sit it out to the street and I guess nobody wants to, wants to bundle it up or whatever. I don't, you know, I'm like Mr. Lindsay. I put my trash cans up by the garage. It, uh, they're in front of the house. The reason they're in front of the house, I, I have no room on the side of the house, unless I really want to put them in, in my garage. But my garage is a little bit on the full side, you know? They don't fit there. So I don't mind when they're up there next to the garage to the house. But when they stay in the street for weeks and weeks, I'll give you an example of what had happened to me, is that the lid on one of the trash cans was broken off by the driver. And I called waste management, what do I do? They said, well, we'll put you on our list to get it repaired. Sounds great. It took two, and they said, take the trash can and put it next to the street to where we get to it. it took two weeks for them to get it repaired. Well, according to the ordinance, I would be in violation. I would have been in violation of the ordinance. No fault of my own. But anyway, that's where I, you know, I just, I just like it up off the street, either 48 hours after or 24 hours after. Either way, but not all week. You know, not all week. Number two thing, and I thank you, you know, Randy, you know, for what is happening with Madison. And I hope it gets done <laughs> by May, you know, 
And, and the reason I, I say that is because we have new plots now. If you ever follow our, our Facebook page, we, ha you know, we had older people who says that they cannot get down on their, on their knees. You know, so we have now taller plots where you can actually put a chair next to it and you can reach and, you know, and do gardening. You know, and that's a big plus. We've been getting calls. We put that on Facebook and we're starting to get calls already. So those are going to go pretty quick, I'm pretty sure. So I hope the ones from Madison can come over early part of May as well. Well, let's talk about that. So you have some water tanks that need to go? We, put, we've, we have already taken four. Mm -hmm. The other ones are the ones that are down below. And we're having trouble where Ron says they're really into the ground. So we're hoping the backhoe can grab a hold of them and pull those up. So what, we're, we're, we're helping you move some stuff. Right. But we're not there to deconstruct. I so don't. You're, you're staff together, whoever you need to, you make everything prep for us. And me and Howard have talked about it. We're more than help, well, he's help, more than happy to help you out, but again, we're not there to deconstruct and help you do all that stuff. We're just there for the machinery to move stuff. So when can you, if you want to give me a call, or give Mr. Kiko a call to coordinate that, that would be great. And um, that way we can get you guys set up up there and get that Madison Street School property done. And I see that Kathy already put on Facebook about the free lots for citizens. Um, yeah. So we've got to work, work out um, some sort of billing. We you probably need to get you set up as a vendor. But how about you reach touch base with me? Um, and then we'll get with Howie about moving that stuff. But we need to get some things worked out between us for like setting you up as a vendor so we can pay you the uh, annual rent, like I said I was going to, okay. uh, for, for those three lots. But okay. let's just coordinate all that. I'm sure we can meet your deadline. That's not a problem. Okay. Yep. okay. And thank you for doing community garden. A lot of our citizens use it. We appreciate your, what you do for our community. Oh, it's growing. Yeah, it it's has. growing. You know, we've got people, you know, Kathy's getting more, most of the phone calls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great. So let her, you know, negotiate that. Yeah. But then, but I go over and I show them the plot, you know, and there's, we're getting a wide range of people now. Oh, it's great. It, sure. it, it, it's, it's just growing, you know, it's growing. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Craig Walker, one more thing. And I asked the deputy, and I'm going to give a kudos to the deputy, and it wasn't him. But they, they, I thought it was him. No, but I thought it was him. I thought it was him because they said the young deputy helped out. There's an older lady that was in our church, and she had lost her wallet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she made a report, and it was on a Sunday. And she, and she thought she might have left it in well, Carol Bellhorn's car. You know. And the deputy actually went to the church and asked Carol if, she, if he can look in Carol's uh, car. Well, it wasn't in Carol's car. So he went back to the house and he offered to take her, pick, to, take her uh, to church, but she was really distraught. Of going to, she, at least he offered. She said she, she didn't take him up on the offer, mm -hmm. but he offered. That's the kind of police that we need. It's called community policing. That's exactly. Yep. Awesome. Thank you, Mr. Craig Walker. Anyone else? Okay. Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Prentice Drive. Um, I would just like to say I really think it would be wonderful if they could take the trail clear to Park Lane, you know, I think that'd be a great thing for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And also, I'd just like to comment on the state of the sidewalks in New Carlisle. I know they're not riding bikes on the sidewalks, but for people who are walking without a car or who are pushing strollers or something, I mean, the sidewalks are just, you know, some of them are up this high, the next one. You know, if you're not really careful, you trip over them. Some places there is no sidewalk and there's just mud and grass. And especially if you go down, I guess it would be south down Scott, down there, boy, there's just some awful place, places that I've just noticed when I've walked around. And if people were in a wheelchair or a scooter, they'd have to go out in the street, you know. And so many people have their cars parked across the sidewalk 
But for people like that, that's, that's really a disability too. So I think that's something that kind of needs to be looked into is the conditions of the sidewalk in, in our community. And also, they really need a crosswalk uh, at uh, Funston to get over to Studebaker's and over to the um, license place. place. Because you, you want to go down this uh, crosswalk, <laughs> you know, that's a long way down there. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one place that really something like that would be helpful. So i just like to thank that guy for, you know, mentioning a few of those things. I think those are things that they could look at. Thank you. Mr. Pitko, just always, she made me think of something. When you talk about sidewalks that are, that are buckled up, and it's usually, a lot of times you see it because there's a tree right there that's grown so big over the years. Is there any, like, is there any ordinances that are, are to you know, prohibit stuff like that? There, there isn't, but we try to tell people if they want to plant something back in the curb lawn, we just, you know, no, you can't plant anything in the right of way. Right. Um, but we have done a lot of tree removal this year, and part of it was these ones that were overgrown. They had big stumps that, that heave some sidewalk. Uh, we just did one at, at Madison and Scott Street, I think, this year. Yeah, um, yeah so we're, we're, we already started kind of working on them a lot more. They're more diseased and trying to get them out of there so we can start on that project. If it's planted between the sidewalk and the street, is that it's, our, it's, is it our right to go in and, and do something? Te technically, it? it's the homeowner's responsibility to trim and maintain. Right. But if it becomes disease safety issue, then we go in and remove it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And we have looked at mid crosswalks, as she had stated, at near the Funston area. We've done one near Washington. Um, we, we keep coming back to a number of uh, drive entrances. You have the License Bureau driveway entrance. There's multiple ones there. You got Studebaker's, you got the gas. So some of those have stalled a little bit just because of the amount of in and out traffic of the ingress, egress points at by Funston. I mean, you have Arrow Queen, the drive. Yeah, you have probably 10 ingress, egress points all around Funston. Oh, yeah. You got someone walking out there, there's just people moving everywhere, and Funston's a heavily traveled road. Yeah. But we have we have looked at it before. Okay. Mr. Rogal, did you have no, no, no. no good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hello, my name is uh, Charlotte Farley. My address is 1204 Hemlock Way. I just wanted to make a comment about uh, waste management. I think they're awesome. And um, I have the smaller can. It came with the house. So I pay the lower dollar amount. Um, and they recycle, you know. So just because someone might be a lower bid doesn't make it a good fit for the city. So do consider that. So look at all those avenues before you decide. Um, and the minutes that I read online, I really don't watch YouTube. Uh, the minutes that I read online are really kind of difficult between the sheriff's office, the fire, and Mr. Howard. Um, it, it, they're all different fonts and pitches. If you could maybe stick with Times New Roman 12 pitch, that is like the normal business type font. That would be awesome. It would be so much easier to read for those of us who do read the minutes online. Um, and there was one more thing, and I'm sorry, it has just escaped me. Yeah, okay. Um, done. So I can't think of it. I will when I step back. I'll think of it. If so, I'll step back up. Let me know. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. I've enjoyed uh, attending the council meeting. Thank you for coming. All right, anyone else? Mm -hmm. well, you look like you're hesitant. I want to make sure I give you the opportunity. Oh, I remember. There's oh, there. there. <laughs> the trash cans. And, and I, I, I know this gentleman here gets aggravated at the trash cans on, on people's property and wherever. If my neighbor's trash can is not put up, say, by three or four, I take it to them. 
I will walk it up their driveway because I don't want to look at it. But I'm not driving around the city looking for right. someone who's not taking their trash cans out. Uh, I do see them out. It's ugly, but I continue driving. Um, there is, uh, I have a neighbor right across around the street from me on White Pine. His trash cans don't move. Mm -hmm. He brings the trash to the cans and the cans stay there 24-7, 365. Yeah. You can't change those people. You simply cannot. That's where they're going to stay. So that was my final comment. Thank right. you. Thank you very much. Can you come speak at every one of our meetings? Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Did I just ask a question about that? I should now. Hi. Um, if I were to take my neighbor's trash can back, I'd be arrested for trespassing mm -hmm. and If they truly wanted to push it? Yes. Yeah. They would have to at least issue at least a trespass warning first and say, you know, you're not allowed to be on this person's property. So if they make that complaint, and then it's a second offense, then yeah, it, you could be charged. Yeah. Maybe I could just ask her, but I'm Right. No, I'm, I, I'd like to see you go through a mayor's court. I think that'd be awesome. <laughs> 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 I'm just teasing. We want to keep a magistrate now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. 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 Thank Alrighty, moving on. Let's see here. Resolution done. Moving on to ordinances. Ms. Barner, if you would please. Ordinance 2023-23E, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. An ordinance amending the city of New Carlisle's estimated resources available to appropriate for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2023, and declaring an emergency. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Lund. The or, uh, explanation of this ordinance, this, um, I didn't even, I gotta review this real quick. An ordinance, um, the suggestion for estimated resources uh, that we can spend for the fiscal year 2023. And I don't have it in front it's of me for fire, grant. fire grants. Thank you, Colleen. You're welcome. Do you want more detail from the grant? No, we're good. Okay. Anyone else? Any comments from Mr. Bridge? Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. That passed the seven. Councilman Lindsay. Thank you. Sorry. Yes. Apologies. Did you say yes? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Before you go on, Ms. Burner, I just had to say something, Mr. Eggleston. You were in the audience. I'm really let down. I was hoping you had something really amazing you were going to say tonight. Right. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. All right. Fair enough. I just. Was hoping for more though, Jeff. You kind of like that. as an avid biker, we they appreciated his feedback. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, all right. Go ahead, Ms. Bonner. When, you, when you're ready. Zero. Yes, thank you. Yeah. All right, moving on to Ordinance 2023 24E, Introduction, Public Hearing, and Action Tonight, an ordinance supplementing certain appropriations contained in New Carlisle City Ordinance 2022 62 and declaring an emergency. Okay. Second. First by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Eggleston. And an explanation of this ordinance. The first ordinance uh, mm -hmm. amended our budget. This actually allows us to spend the money. And discussion, Council? I'm ready, please. All right. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? <coughs> yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. That passed at 7 0. Moving on to Ordinance 2023-25E. Yeah. Introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to accept the material terms of the 
one Ohio subdivision settlement pursuant to the one Ohio memorandum of understanding and consistent with the terms of the July 21, 2021 national opioid, opioid settlement and to sign the one Ohio subdivision participation form in declaring an emergency. So moved. Second. An explanation of this ordinance, this uh, in July 2021, we as we discussed at the last council meeting, Mr. Mayor, you're not here. Um, so it's a state of Ohio entered a opioid settlement. Um, if any of the political subdivisions of the state wanted to take part in those settlements, you had to sign the MOU with the state. So that's what this is in order to get the subsequent um, settlements from the two uh, suppliers that are left. Thank you, Council. Any discussion? Sir. This is so we get the funds and then the county gets them. We're going pass through the county, yes. Okay. I, that's what I, Thank when you I was clarify. reading it, yeah. I thought that's what it was, and I mm -hmm. thought, but it doesn't sound like, you know, what we had talked about the last meeting. There's a couple of things in there I'm not crazy about, but, you know. Sure. Mm -hmm. Got an awful lot of emergency ordinances. And I warned you of that. Three, two of those are because you didn't have a full council to do emergency at the four three meeting. <laughs> Anyone else? So that's right. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Griff. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodel. Yes. That passes seven zero. Mm -hmm. I'm on twenty six, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Ordinance 2023-26E, Introduction, Public Hearing, and Action Tonight, an ordinance establishing a special revenue fund for one Ohio settlement proceeds and declaring an emergency. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Eggleston. And next place of ordinance, in order to get the settlement funds, we have to create a uh, fund specially for that. Um, in normal circumstances, well, 99.9% .9 of the time, you need to get auditor approval to create a new fund, uh, but they have a really simple work and stating that we do not. So Ms. Harris would be able to create the fund tomorrow. Okay. Any questions? Oh, right. <laughs> when you're ready, Ms. Brenner. How does she feel about it? Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rogold. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. That passes 7-0. Ordinance 2023-27E, Introduction, Public Hearing, and Action Tonight, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to accept proposed opioid settlements with Teva, Allegrin, CVS, Walgreens, and Walmart in declaring an emergency. So moved. Second. Mr. Eggleston, second by Mr. Lindsay. And an explanation of this ordinance. So the settlements, uh, one has already come, Johnson. We are going to try to retroact get money on that. That'll be up to the state of Ohio. However, the two coming up, which the deadline is April 18th, which is why these are emergency ordinances. This is from your Teva, Allegrin, CVS, and Walgreens and Walmart. After this, you'll have another one with a uh, Janison Pharmaceuticals. Okay. Council, any discussion? Sure. This money also goes to the county, or do we get to retain this money? It's all going to the any, all any going, opioid I mean, money. Going to yeah, county, any, not yeah, council. Yeah, any opioid money we get is going to pass it. We need to keep some money. No, we don't. <laughs> it's just too much to handle. <laughs> when you're ready, please. Okay. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. That's accepted 7 0. <coughs> ordinance 2023 28E, Introduction, Public Hearing, and Action Tonight, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to accept a proposed opioid settlement with Janssen Pharmaceuticals Incorporated and its related entities in declaring an emergency. So Second. And an explanation of this ordinance, similar to the one that we had just approved. Uh, this is a, a separate uh, settlement from Janice and Fargo Pseudopers. Discussion? When you're ready, Ms. Brown. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. That passes 7 0. Mm -hmm. 
The last one is a read only. Ordinance 2023-29, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on May 1st, 23. An ordinance amending ordinance 17-32 regarding processing fees for credit card transactions at the city administration building. And additional city business, uh, the resident, residential price, price and placement conversation. All right. I don't know uh, the last, last thing if anybody addressed the all last meeting. Yeah, they addressed it. They do it in this meeting. Mm -hmm. so, oh, okay. All right. Well, we didn't have that. Oh, okay. Fair enough. So, um, do you want to start? Uh, I can agree with Dick Kane and Dick Mom and Sidewalk. But where they're placed on the house as long as they're by the house. I don't think the complaint's that you can see them from the street. I think the complaint is that they're on the street. <laughs> you know. um, I mean, I know there's already an ordinance on the books. They have to be removed within 24 hours of pickup. And, and obviously, we all know, we all drive the same paths and, and see the same uh, offenders, I guess I'll say this, uh, um, every week, every day. Uh, it infuriates me because it's just a sign of laziness. Now, if they don't get dumped, and then that could be either a, a, a billing issue. Let's let's be honest. It could be a payment issue, or you know, my trash didn't get dumped today. I promise it got paid. It didn't get dumped. Um, you know that happens. Uh, it could be Mr. Bridge and I actually talked about this. It could be uh, an issue with cars being parked in front of the cans. Um, we have we all know this. We have a lot of citizens who park on the street, um, which makes it difficult for especially in the back flats to 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 get the. Uh, um, get the trash trucks through with the extended arms so maybe that's something that if we do uh, talk to waste management about making sure that that, that driver's lease putting a good effort to get out and get the trash so if you can't get to it if they leave it um i'll tell you my trash gonna be sitting at the curb because they've already got an email about picking it up tomorrow <laughs> um but no i think like i think the biggest issue is getting them off getting them off the street getting them up through the house once you get it you know, 35, 40 feet, you know, then you can do what you want with it, but get it off the road. Mm -hmm. um. <clears throat> yes. Mr. Ringer. To, to continue on uh, Mr. Ringgold's uh, comments, I think they need to be on cement up by the house, <coughs> not in the yard not sitting in the front yard in the grass or blowed over you know whatever uh i know mine gets mine got blew over the other day and one of those 300 windstorms there you know i'm constantly out there picking my cans up you know when it falls in the yard i go i'm not going out there i don't want to get blown away but when the wind dies down i go pick it up but i, I think if, if we could get them out of the grass out of the yard up by the house you know uh I wouldn't have a problem with that. I mean, some people like to put them on their front porch. I forgot. I don't understand why they put their trash beside their front door, especially with summer coming. But that's each to his own, I guess. Mm -hmm. but as long as they're up by the house, out of the road, or out of the road, out of the yards, you know, uh, I don't have a problem with the rest of it. And, and this question is probably for Mr. Goods. Uh, can we make a motion to amend that ordinance? Yeah, that's what we're here for. Okay. Well, that's what you guys want. Uh, yeah. We'll have to go through the process after this to go through right. the amending process, but at least I know okay. what your verbiage is. And uh, I'll make the motion to amend the ordinance where the kings are up by the house, like next to the brick or the siding, whatever you got. Uh, out of the out of the yard, out of the front yard, side yard, you know, out of the grass, I guess it should say. And uh, again, we already have an ordinance to keep from to be 
removed within 24 hours. So I think having to get in this ordinance too is kind of like redundant. Or is this the ordinance? No, that one ordinance says you, you only take them out and back within 24 hours of pickup. So that's one. Right. This one deals with where they are in that meantime. Right. Yeah. The, I, I think up by the yard someplace, or excuse me, up by the house someplace would be fine. And out of the out of the front yard, out of the out of the grass areas, so to speak. So did you get all that, Mrs. Bunny? So could we say, Mr. I, Lindsay? Be so could we say, and I'm asking you because I think yeah. we're on the same page. I would like it on the side or in the back, but I understand that some people can't do that. But I'm with you. I don't want it in the yard. I don't want it by their, their front door. So if we were to say it could be out front, against the house, at the corner closest to the drive. Or the garage. Or, well, the garage is usually in front of the drive. Yeah. Right? Some people don't have to. You, 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 you want to keep it general drive. yet specific, and that's the hardest thing. What's yeah. that? You got to keep it general yet specific, yeah. and that's the hardest thing. So can I help out? Sure. So basically what I'm hearing from certain council members is some freedom to put it somewhere in their yard. No, not in their yard. It's close proximity to their, oh, uh, close, their, their house. house. Close proximity <laughs> to their house. House. And then on a stable surface. Right. right. Similar, similar Heidi to your cars. Okay. So here's what we're going to come to find if we tax someone. How do you define close proximity? What does that mean? Well, them define it. well that's what we got to do. So we guys might want to define what close proximity is. Within six foot of your, I mean. That's it, within a foot. I was going to say, I, I put mine, when I put my cans up. It, oh, as close to the house as possible? I, I put it, I put it butts right up to my brick, mm -hmm. and the other one sits right in front of it. Sure. So there's what, the cans are three foot, man, two foot, 30 inches. So within 60 inches, both of my cans are within 60 inches of the house. I can't put them side to side because it'd, it'd be in front of my garage door. I, I, we you, we have uh, we have our administration recommendation, which is what you have in front of you. Um, you guys think that's too strict, which is fine. Um, but I'm trying to figure out how to uniformly apply something to. We have different housing stocks, like we're on R sevens and Prentice. All right, so they have the they can't have it on their front porch, but most of those houses have a side door from the driveway. Mm -hmm. So how do you, is it okay to have it in their side, by their side door, but not on their front porch? Yeah, yeah, they could still, in my opinion, they could still, put, it's they could still the put it the way yeah, they that we... They wouldn't put it beside their house, I ain't got a problem with Right. They could still be on the side, kind of like what you, the original writing was. But if they can't, like some people that don't, that have, say, sure. flower beds on their side, then they can put it on the front corner. We do whatever you guys want. I just want to make it so it's right. not, yeah. it's not vague, like, that's all I'm trying to do. Is that too big? Hang on, Mr. Mr. Bond. No one on the side. I think this is going to be nearly impossible to enforce. However, you decide to work it. No, it's not. No. Um, unless you go very strict mm -hmm. on on defining it, I think it's going to be nearly impossible to enforce. I personally uh, have a have a problem with telling somebody where they can and can't put their trash can on their property. Um, you know, I have, I have almost three acres uh, where I live. And so to, I have a lot of places I can put them, but to, to have to say, tell me where I can and can't put them, I think it's a little bit of an overreach. I understand the thing of, you know, not wanting it out by the uh, street and, and the town is different than where I live, but. I, I've had repetitive problems with waste management getting our trash right. Um, I'm, I'm not real thrilled with their service personally. Um, we've always been fighting. I just recently have gotten recycling and trash every week because it's been a month literally. Um, even though I've been paying for it ever since they gave it to me. So, um, that's that's another issue, but on this issue here, I, I think no matter how we cut this up, it's going to be very hard to define unless unless it's very precise, um, which I think then it's going to really be an overreach on our part. I think it's going to make it very difficult to enforce it. 
So do you think it's an, I mean, I'm asking, I'm not trying to sound condescending. I mean, do you no. think it's an overreach for us saying that they can't be at the curb? I mean, if they want to keep it at the no. curb, do you think that's No, I think, it, I, think, I think it's kind of a responsible thing to do, to, right. to remove it. I think the ordinance that we currently have in place that says it can only get out there for 24 hours or whatever right. is, is about, I mean, I, I don't know how you can rewrite that. Because what I'm hearing is we're trying to solve the problem of it being out there right. for 24 hours a day. So it seems like we're trying to operate that home. Well, we are. Well, we are. We are. We are one day homeowner association, and let me just piggyback, Mr. Bond. I, I I respect your lack of government oversight, stuff like that. But one of the things we have to keep in mind is people are packing here like sardines. You know, I mean, we're two point three square miles with two thousand rooftops. I think it's as you mentioned, where you are, it's a little vastly different than ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the resident houses here in New Carlisle. Um, I don't care what city you're at, they're going to have legislation and local control over stuff like this. And there's a health, safety, sanitation aspect that council is responsible to make sure is upholding, you know, um, and that site sanitation, and that can also mean blight and stuff like that. So, and I, I think that it, it won't be hard to enforce if it's written correctly. What I think is going to be hard is defining it, like you said, and I think I'm just going to what you said first, mm -hmm. is what do you, how do you sit there and say, unless saying it's, one foot away from your house. You can't say close to as possible because that leaves room for interpretation and personal judgment. And then anytime you're trying to look at those things, the le you want as less gray area as you possibly can have. And it needs to be as black as white as possible. It does, you know? So that's why you guys got elected to come up with these things. We'll help you as much as we can. If council doesn't want to go the way that the administration had, had presented, just keep it simple. It, it should be a, it should be closest somewhere near your house. It should not be in your front yard. I don't agree with that, you know. But to have it sit there and say just somewhere in the proximity of your house within a foot, that way we have something measurable. And I hate to do that, so it's one of the things I was against. But these codes, as we have them in place, they're hard to enforce. They're hard to keep up on. We have speeding laws in our country, but people still speed. So just in case it's on the book doesn't mean it's going to get heavily thing. And quite frankly, there's some maybe more important things that we tend to go after, something like this. So um, what we're just doing is just trying to clean it up. You guys got that monument task. Um, I just ask that it's, it's black, as black and white as possible can be. If we say within one third of the house, that means well, you can also sit to say within one foot, but not on, not anywhere near your Talk front. Somebody to the garage. Um, well, they won't say that either. Unless you don't have a garage. <laughs> Here's, I'll be honest with you. I think council just sits there and says, put it by your house somewhere. Where they put it after that is up to you. I mean, I, I don't know what house to do because you can't sit there and say you can't have it on your front porch here. Whereas someone with a not a wide house, that may be an only area they have to where it is still close to their front porch. And I think the more that we kind of detail what we got to do, we're splitting hairs. I think the goal is just to get it out of the middle of the road and then out of the middle of the driveway. Just keep it yeah. close to the house within a foot. And, and then we're we good. can retool it down the road if you Yeah, and we'll see see if it causes any problems. Because if not, this is what our third or fourth time talking about yeah. this. You know, I understand Mr. Baum's position. I get it. I get it 100%. But we do got to have some control because we are in a city like that. But. The more wording to it, it's just gonna it's just gonna be worse. Yeah. Could we use the lighted sign on the side of the 101 building to shame people into trash? <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, when we get that thing up, we can do whatever we want with it. But yeah, I mean that's just what it is, and it, and I think that a satisfied administration just give us some guidance, allow us to do the the your property maintenance code because that's what this is under, um, and right. I think it'll be fine. <laughs> Big sign, Mr. Smith, no. your trash can. <laughs> so, Mr. Mayor, there's a motion on the floor. Does council wish for that to be rescinded? I don't know what the motion was, to be honest, Mr. Lindsay. Well, I can yes. repeat most of it. <laughs> I don't Mike, you basically Mr. Eggleston had a comment. I just think that if the code were enforced to get lost, you would eliminate it. 
no, we issue, we, we go after that. People, it, when, when this lady, Ms. Red, I asked her to come back because she got it. We can issue you a violation every day of the week, but you really have to change people's way of living. So you got repeat offenders at speed every single time they get a chance. You get repeat DOI offenders. We really have to change how people live. And that is the hardest thing to do. We can, it, like I said, we can put you into the mayor's court. They're just gonna go. Sure. Mm -hmm. That's what I said at the outset. Yeah. You can't get too picky because everybody's different. Well, that's when you have, that's when you make the rules and your city makes the rule and you follow it. And that's just what it goes to. Because we have. Okay, hold on. Guys. The other option is just to like, okay, so here's your other option. Just abolish your whole exterior property maintenance code. Right. So what's the no. difference between telling someone what to do with their trash can? No, I'm not done being smart. I'm being very serious. No, I understand. We get complaints can... about people having junk cars in their driveway or a flat tire or their car's been parked on the street for two weeks and hasn't moved. So what's the difference between that and us telling someone what to put the trash can? So when you look under the 1400s, this is the exterior property maintenance code in the city. Exactly. That is, you're cutting your grass. So if we're going to get rid of that, that's someone, why are we telling someone to cut the grass? Above six inches. So it's really. No, hold on. No, hold on. Wait, wait. Okay, so here, I said this a couple meetings back, and, and I'm not picking on you to say this, but people say we're not a homeowner association. We're not, in, a, in a, I guess, a legal sense as far as we don't pay fees because we want to live in a neighborhood that you know, requires a little white picket fence or whatever it may be. At the same time, from a you know, city standpoint, we are because that's why people move into the town. They don't want to, you know, they want to. You know, they want to be in town with businesses and gas stations or pools or parks or whatever. And at the same time, they don't want to live in a town where they can have a bonfire out back where they're burning their trash like you can out in the country. Um, that's, you know, that's a great thing about living out in the country. You can go out and work on a hot rod and crank it up. And it's not going to bother anybody. You can't do that in the city. So the reason why is we have all these ordinances in place to keep that from happening. And I'm, I'm glad because if we were to get rid of that, I would be moving out of this town immediately. I mean, I don't want to live in a town where, where someone can leave, where someone on my street leaves their trash can right in the middle of their yard nine times out of ten. Uh, I, and I don't like living next to that. So in a sense, we are a homeowner association. It's our responsibility to try and make our city look as, as good as it can. Because why? Because people move to our city that builds our revenue to repave roads. If we start letting it go to where people can have tires stacked up in the corner of their house and engines leaking oil in the driveway everywhere, whatever it may be, People move out. We have no revenue to repave our roads. That's, that's it in a nutshell, basically. Okay, sorry, go ahead. Nope. Um, requiring a, a resident to move their trash can to a certain space is, is no different than the U.S. Postal Service requiring where your mailbox goes. You ever try to move your mailbox? No, it's got to be in a certain area. If, if you move it, like my mailbox is on the front of my house. If I move my mailbox to this to my street down by the end of the sidewalk, they wouldn't deliver it. Mm -hmm. It's not where it's supposed to be. They would send me a letter, put a thing on my front door telling me that I have to contact Postmaster General to get authorization to move my mailbox. Um, we, we, we live in a structured society. That's, that's, I mean, you know, that's what makes city and this country so great. It's structured. Why it has its movements and, and your, your freedoms it still has structure and without structure there's chaos um, and, and if we let one thing go before you know it's going to be another thing and another thing and just like Mr. Lowry said um, eventually you're going to have people not following all the ordinances and no one wants to live there um, and this is all proactive as we are trying to grow the city, both with new residents and new business. You know, residents want to live in a city that has structure that they know is going to be clean. Um, businesses want to come to, to cities that have that same structure. Um, you know, we put all the ordinances on our own businesses too. We, we kind of tell them where their garbage has to be and, and where it has to be enclosed. Um, so it's it's no different, um, you know. We're not saying it has to be in your garage. It, it just needs to be off the street and, and adjacent to your house. It needs to be, you know, um, where it's 
both safe for you and the public. I mean, it's not safe for someone who's walking down the street if someone leaves their trash out there. You know, that, that, that trash brings vermin, trash brings rodents, um, several health hazards, depending on how that person may or may not live. Um, so, and I understand what you're saying. It, you know, they're not following the code now. Why would we, why would they follow it even more? Well, that doesn't mean we don't try. It doesn't mean we just say, okay, we're done. We're not, we're not gonna follow it. So we're just gonna give up on it. Um, we, we can't do that. They do. We didn't know, madam. I don't know. Let's hold on, Janelle. We got to keep this all in order. So, Mr. Cook, and then we'll get back to whatever you want to do with whatever it was you said because I can't remember. <laughs> Mr. Cook. First off, I agree with Mr. Bond. Second of all, I do not think that until we get a clear resolution of what we're going to do with the trash cans, we're whistling Dixie and putting a big brother syndrome on what we're trying to do with the city. Second of all, we have a bigger mess up there at Howard's with those cans mm -hmm. than what we've got probably the rest of the town. Funny you say that. I talked to Ms. Eagleston a couple weeks ago about that, and I will be looking at putting legislation in front of council to actually ban those in the city. Donations? It's yes. funny. I was wanting to bring the same because thing Because it is you. a nonstop battle. One, um, one or not ban them, but a man that they be manned um, at all times. Um, however, they choose to do that. I mean, I personally think they should be. They should have the same requirements as as their as the business dumpster. They need to be enclosed. Um, they need to have limited to, to no access. The uh, donation center by me. It's in down. On, it's in a Kroger parking lot, but it's a massive semi trailer and it's from Goodwill, and it's manned when it's open yeah. um, and it's unfortunate because it does provide for some of our citizens who need the help but it is a non-stop battle it truly really is whether it be down by our pool or down up here it's unfortunately some people ruin it for everyone else so that's something that I'll be finishing looking into and what other cities have done and then as the policy the pop policy person for council will submit stuff to them for them to look at um, but it is time that we do something with those donations because they're just making it very unsightly yeah. for, for a lot of people. And then it gets wet and then it gets gross and then they can't use it anyway. Yeah. Um, but I think I called you was the day before or the day of the last council meeting. If we were going to bring it up then, I said, hold on, we'll work on stuff. And there's, we got a lot going on. So it's definitely on the radar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cook, do you have anything else? Mr. Lindsay? Uh, the motion was to get ready to write this down and type it. I'll talk slow. Okay. If council wants, if council agrees to have the cans put proximity to your house within touching the house or touching each other, touching the house, out of the yard on a hard surface, concrete, green. Blocks or whatever that they want to put inside. I think that's about as simple as you can get it. Uh, it keeps it out of the yards. You know, like you said, you have a neighbor that puts it right in the middle of his yard. Oh, yeah. That would ever take the, you know what, out of me. I'd be going to move his can for him than I do. And he wouldn't like where I'd put it, but anyway. Uh, but I think if it's on, on cement and it's up by their house, that should be sufficient. So, on a, on, on a um, hard surface, hard surface, so. concrete. Uh, Would you like me to read what I what you said? Go ahead. Okay. You read. Type. Okay. Hmm. Close proximity to the house, touching the house, or each other on a hard surface. Correct. I know it sounds uh, a little. <laughs> that's what he said. That's what I said. Randy, please do that. Oh, so I think you're on the right track. My only thing I ask that you actually put a measurement instead of just saying close proximity, so we can actually have a solid thing. So a foot within the house would be great. And then right. on an approved surface such as cement, 
asphalt or fresh limestone because right. that's our current at three okay. places. That's it. We just we definitely want to have some measurement device that we can get there and say, okay, yes, this is because if not, what are we what am I tagging for? Because it may be Dave's discretion, our coding guy, be like, five feet's fine. We can be mine. Well I'm saying no, I want one feet. You know, so we just gotta have some sort of okay, hard within a foot of your house. Thank you. How's that? Because that works. like I said, I, I put mine here and the other ones right in front of their basic surface. The house. So Proof surface, list of the surface, he listed. Cement, as asphalt, or crust lines. And one foot within the property. I'm good with that. We're building it. Foot, okay. On the proof surfaces of what? Table, Cement, blacktop, or crushed limestone. Approved surfaces. Approved surfaces. Cement, crushed limestone, or blacktop. Asphalt. It was the approved surfaces yeah. in the city of, of New Carlisle. So, how I made a good point. So, right now, a crew surface to put your car is not pavers. Right. So, if someone were to put a paver down and close to that, we would never allow a crew surface for a paver um, unless it's the whole thing. So, right. what you guys want would a paver, and I think it's a very acceptable use of the paver. Paver oh, base. Yeah. A paver yeah. base. Paver base. Paver so base. I don't want to get out and get live center for a cement pad. You yeah. can go get pavers. Right. You know, as long as the can sits on it. And, yeah, for sure. You know. So cement, asphalt, crust, limestone, or papers. Right. Okay. When you're done, Ms. Burner, read it, please. Don't overload it. <laughs> the cans placed within one foot of the house on either concrete, crust, limestone, asphalt, or a paver base. Or paper. Paper. Because it would be more than one. Well, I would say a base of cement, asphalt, crust, limestone, or papers. Okay, I'll go back and rewatch all this. <laughs> okay, so that's I'll the motion. Get it right. That's I'm good with that. I don't have a second though, correct? No, right. no second. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Eggleston, second. Mm. No, okay. you want me to say not on something? We're complaining about transport. Well, you're not mentioning it, so it just has to be within one foot of your house. Yeah, if they were to put it on the front porch, it's their lifestyle. We can, it, it's their we house, can, no. We can readdress it as needed. Yeah. If needed. What about my garage behind my house? It's over the front of the garage. So a house or a garage? It's, 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 so you have a detached garage. Sorry. That's a good, so she made a good point. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, that would work too. That would work too at your house or house, house or, 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 or 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 structure. <laughs> uh, let, me, let me think about this. House or <sighs> call me when you guys. That's yeah. simple. <laughs> house or other house or other structure on property. Okay. Because any any accessory structure is going to be the rear of the house anyway, yeah. whether it be a detached right. garage, whether it be a shed or a little shed you go down to your beach and get. It's all going to be behind the house anyway. So you're good. Okay. You would be up here. So we have it. You need a minute, Miss Burner? <laughs> I don't know. Need more than a minute. I'm going to go back and rewatch this. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> oh, if you don't like it in the minutes, you can have me change it next week. Huh? Or right. next time. This is just for a minute. You can still vote it down if the, if when it's red. Yeah. So, okay. And Eggleston was my second. She was your second. All right. That you know what? You know, you know what? Actually, I'm just uh -oh. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Councilman Robold. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. No. Councilman Bond. No. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. That is four, two, three. Yay. All right. Now question. Sure. I could amend that and say if you have more than three acres, it doesn't apply. <laughs> but I think he's the only one that has more than three acres in this town. So. Okay. No one thinks he lives in town, so he's fine. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> that's the, that's the problem. See, that's you can't see his house. Right. 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 No, that, no, that's, no. Oh, that's coming next that's week. Okay. Yeah, I got to go through okay. the legislative process. Okay, okay. okay. You're good. Right. Charter review and alcohol ballot measure public campaign discussion will be set or done at the 5 1 23 council meeting. 
And then that leaves us for any other open city topics before we move on. Anything else? It is late, so let's just go ahead. I, I want to go over one number, just real quick. 22% um, of our citizens use the low volume or senior service trash. Where do you get that number? I found the previous email from back in uh, oh. last year. So it's, year old. it's only a year old? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> So is that under the 55 or 65 threshold? I'm trying to think. Well, what we did, so that 55 was during the last mm -hmm. contribution. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, it's uh, 380 total out of the uh, 1,819. Very minimal. Sure. All right. Anything else? Anything nope. else? And as soon as we get the updated numbers, I'll send them out to you guys. All right. So, executive session tonight to consider the sale or donation of city property and to consider the purchase of property. So we will go to executive session where uh, it's only for council administrators. And if you do want to hang out until we come back in the normal session, you're welcome to outdoors. I don't foresee any action being taken place. Mr. Mayor, move to go into executive session to consider the sale or donation of city property and to consider the purchase of property. Second on the same. <coughs> Mr. Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Herbold? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Engelson? Yes. Seven here. All right, take five minutes. Moving back into regular session. Second. Second by Ms. Engelson. You need a minute, right? Oh. All right, all right. right. <laughs> Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lee? Yes. Councilman Herbold? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Engelson? Yes. I need a motion to adjourn. Yes, to adjourn. Hold on, hold on. Adjourn. I wasn't done. I need a motion if no one else has any other topic. <laughs> Move to adjourn. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Eggleston. Yes, 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 and yes. Eggleston. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. No. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Did you seriously say? Eight. We are adjourned. Walk on the